Hi everyone, let's go over my medium time frame, low time frame and micro bullish and bearish Elliott wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the medium time frame bearish scenario where we are still expecting a move towards the downside in either a three wave structure in a wave Y or an impulsive direct structure in a wave C. If we look towards this wave B and X, it has to be finished already with then a three wave structure in an ABC expanding flat where the most common target for wave C is between these two 1.618s, which on the daily time frame have been very nicely responded as you can see however if I move to the 12 hour time frame you can also see that one of the candles actually closed above the upper 1.618 which is not really something that I like to see and also if I look more locally at the price action for potentially a wave C to the downside it doesn't really favor a 1, 2 for then a bigger 3 to the downside so at the moment as it stands this still feels like an alternative scenario with the more preferred scenario still eventually looking for a more upside instead of going back to 24k. If you go to the bullish scenario on the medium time frame, then we're looking over here at a finished corrective structure in a WXY. Most common target area for wave Y has been nicely respected for then a move to the upside in an impulsive structure. This is then being a wave one, followed by a corrective wave two, where the most common target for wave two is between the 0.5 and the 0.786, which is between 27.9k and 26k. The 3A2 is a rare target at 28.7k, and the 236 is a very rare target, which is only really tagged in very, very bullish environments, and it has been tagged at the moment. In this scenario, we then expect after a wave two, of course, an impulsive wave three to the upside, where you really want to see explosive candles to the upside. And and also the volume should be incredibly high much higher than the volume that we see inside of this wave one to the upside at the moment if we then do zoom in and we go to the two hour time frame then of course the question is is this part of a wave four or is this a corrective structure that is potentially finished in a then one two and then a bigger three to the upside or do we have more downside to go still now if i look at this being an impulsive structure in a one two three long sideways four and then a wave five i usually don't really like to see a wave four being longer than the three fib time taken from the high of one to the low of two to the high of three and the three FIP time is somewhere around here because the one that I have on my chart is the four FIP time meaning that this wave four is four times longer in time than this wave two now a wave four typically is longer than a wave two so therefore we can't really say it's impossible of course for this to be a wave four structure it's just very very long and if you look at the proportions of the different waves and you look at this little wave two over here and this being a massive wave four it doesn't really look good right like sometimes Elliott waves is also about looks this one looks a little bit maybe more like a wave four potential in comparison to this wave two but well in this scenario this is then a wave 4 and actually if we do talk about this being a wave 4 with the bearish scenario on the micro that I will show in a second resulting in a very 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 nice late three wave structure that we've been looking for taking the low over here at 29.5k which we've been talking about for a week basically we then expect more upside after this low has been wicked because if we think about a wave 4 then this blue wave 4 is of a higher degree than the white wave 4 and a higher degree wave 4 tends to end around the price action of a lower degree wave 4 and this wave 4 is a lower degree because this is a wave 4 inside the blue wave 3 and the maximum target therefore for this wave 4 of a higher degree the blue one is taking this low that's why we've been looking for it and it has been tagged and priced now at least bouncing for the time being. If we then look towards the upside, the most common target area for wave 5 is between the 1.236 and the 1.618 taken from the high of 3 to the new low that we made over here for a potential end of wave 4. And you can see that the 2022 range highs are in confluence with the most common target area for wave 5. So that is incredibly interesting that if price would now continue moving towards the upside, then the reaction that we get around 32k is going to be incredibly interesting maybe a wick above close below for the end of a wave five and then eventually a corrective structure to the downside or and that is possible in this particular scenario we're looking at this to be already a finished impulsive structure to the upside and then a wave one with then potentially a wave two being finished right on top of the 236, which again is incredibly rare for a wave two, but we can't disregard it because over here the same happened, 236, for then a big move to the upside. So if price moves towards the upside, hits the 32.5k area with like these a couple of highs from 2022, maybe wicks above 
I actually want to have the lines on my chart. Maybe wicks above, closes below, but then starts ranging below the 2022 range highs, and maybe you start to see some bullish divergences. That might mean that price is going to be in a new wave one, two, and then potentially an explosive three to the upside for much higher prices than 32K. In this particular scenario, then again, if we zoom in, you can see the 0 0.236 has been hit, but the common targets over here, well, we're still far away from the common targets and the 3A2, even a rare target in a wave two, sitting at 28.7K, it's not even close. If you look at the support areas that we have a below price at the moment in case price is dropping, we have a support area over here just above the 3A2 at least. That's in the logarithmic chart because if I switch to the linear chart, you can see the 3A2 is right inside this target box between 29K and 28.8K. And if price will manage to go through this target area, well, my next area of support is all the way down here, which is quite a gap, of course, at 26.5K to 26.2K. If you then zoom in, to the micro scenarios let's go to the 30 minute over here it's been very very interesting what's been happening so in this particular scenario we were looking for a wxy with inside wave w a zigzag structure which is a 535 wave move followed by a corrective three wave x and then looking for a expanding flat a b c in then a wave y so we have a zigzag w flattened y and that is exactly what you want to see in a double combo which then is a wxy structure now if you look inside this wave y wave b have been uh, the most common target area of wave b has been tagged the 1.236 over here being wicked into very nicely while also grabbing the liquidity above the double top for then a move to the downside and we were talking in the previous video about this range taking quite a long time and the longer it takes the more bullish it becomes now we did have a move to the upside but if we go to the cvd divergences then you will see that that move to the upside came with bearish CVD divergences as well. So here on the 15 minute, you can see price then moved to the upside after my previous video and then started to create bearish CVD divergences. Lower high on price, but the yellow line very clearly higher high on the CVD, which is a bearish divergence with the target being this low, which has played out as price moved towards the downside pretty impulsively as well. And the main target area we were looking for was this area over here, where again, the most common target area for wave see being the 1.618 over here with the key level going right through it and also the most common target area for wave y being the 1 and the 1.236 taken from the high to the low of w to the high of x also very nicely respected now, if we then do look at this move towards the downside, there is a little thing I want to talk about and that is the fact that if this is a wave c, you want to see a five wave structure to the downside. However, if we look at this move to the downside, it very much looks like a three wave move and not a five wave move to the downside. And that is interesting because usually we want to see then a one, two, three, four, five. But if we look at this over here being potentially a wave four and I open the micro bearish scenario, what we're then looking for is this to be the high of a wave two, right? In a more bearish scenario, then we have a wave one, two and a bigger three. And I have something to say about this diagonal, be prepared, but let's first look over here that in this particular scenario, we're then looking inside of a blue wave three down here. We're looking at a five wave structure and a one, two, three, and you want to see continuation now if we look at this move to the downside well if this is going to be part of a wave four you actually don't want to see candles close above the 0 0.5 fibonacci taken from the high of a two to the low of a wave three clearly that has happened at the moment a complete invalidation of wave four is going and enter the price action of this wave one over here at 30.6k but honestly looking at this over here this does not look like a wave four anymore to me and if we then do look into what other scenarios we have well we have the potential of a one two one two scenario however i prefer a one two one two scenario to be a contracting diagonal and well if you look at this it's clearly an expanding diagonal so i'm not looking at a one two one two so the only alternative that we have at the moment is potentially this to be an abc three wave structure potentially where if you take a fib from the high of one to the low of one to then the high of this wave two and we toggle on the wave c zigzag targets and we actually jump to well here the 15 minute that's fine we actually did cross the 1.618 which is a rare target for a zigzag a common target for a wave three with a couple of candles you could say it has been relatively nicely respected on the 15 it has been nicely respected on the 30 minute it's just not very nice price section but the only thing we know for sure 
is that now this candle over here this move to the downside landed right inside the target area that we were looking for which is this one over here finds its way towards the upside if it's a nice impulse of no or not it doesn't really matter but this is not part of a way four anymore so either it's some sort of a one two one two more downside or we're just gonna go back to the upside once again the only thing we were looking for is price hitting this area it has done exactly so i've seen many people trading this area as well in the discord group congratulations by the way to all of you guys that's absolutely an amazing entry some people at 29.4k which literally is the wick so that is quite in uh, quite a, in, like an amazing trade if you ask me and now we see a little bit of volume coming into the upside which for me again doesn't look like a way forward so that's why the more bullish scenarios look more probable for me um we could see, of course, with the weekend coming, a bit of a range potentially, as the weekend is known for its ranges. So we could still range somehow to the downside. But of course, with the amount of updates I'm doing, we're going to wait and see in the upcoming 12 hours what's going to happen. Because tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., I'll have a new update. And then we have a bit more price action after this dump that we had. So we can have better probabilities to see what is going on next. If we then finally look at the uh, more bearish scenario and I zoom out, I wanted to talk about this leading diagonal and why this is an alternative scenario for me with a one, two, and then a bigger three to the downside. So first of all, I explained why over here, this doesn't look like an impulse to me in a wave three because of the pump that we have and not really seeing a wave four over here, right? But it is, it's mainly this impulsive structure, right? If we look at this price action, a lot of overlap doesn't look like a diagonal to me at all. Why? Well, the rules of a diagonal if we zoom in to the 30 minute then a diagonal leading diagonal is either a 53535 wave move or all the waves are zigzags in three wave structure so it's a 535 now if we put wave one over here then we're looking at this to be a 535 however this then is an abc structure where wave c is much too short way too short to be a wave c if we take a trend based fit from the high to the low to then the high you can see that the one to one let's actually put it on the zigzag targets over here even though, like the one to one the most common target not even close the 0 0.618 is already a rare target and even that one has not been hit so the probabilities are low so what then if we put wave one over here well, if we put wave one over here, then wave two is not a zigzag. And in a leading diagonal, wave two and four have to be zigzag structures. But this is not a zigzag, as a zigzag is a 535, where B doesn't take the low of A, which clearly has been done because this over here takes the low of this wave one. Another thing is that if you put wave one over here on the left, then in a, in a uh, diagonal each wave has to be shorter each uh, in a contracting diagonal but an expanding diagonal is simply extremely rare so in a contracting diagonal wave three is not allowed to be longer than the one to one of wave one which has also happened which is not what you want to see only if you put wave one to the right and i already explained the problem of that one then you can see that wave three is shorter but then again we don't like this because it's not a nice clear three wave structure to the downside so yeah this leading diagonal not really something that i'm a big fan of to be honest we just look at the price action that we have at the moment give it some peace after it wicked the target that we've been looking for for a while in this more bearish scenario and we just simply wait and see what the weekend is going to bring us so i hope this video was helpful or valuable to you please check out the most recent educational video i've made about the best trading indicator you can use which is the cvd and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and i will see you at the next one bye bye